Before we dive into the anatomy of the left ventricle, we must note that the structure and functionality of the left ventricle play a crucial role in the cardiovascular system. Compared to the right ventricle, the left ventricle is elongated and possesses a thicker myocardium layer, reflecting its critical role in pumping oxygenated blood throughout most of the body. The left ventricle is distinguished by its conical shape, contributing significantly to the diaphragmatic and left pulmonary surfaces and notably forms the heart's apex. It is situated anterior to the left atrium with an orientation that places it partially behind and to the left of the right ventricle when viewed from the front. This means that from a frontal view, the left ventricle is largely obscured by the right ventricle positioned in front of it. Furthermore, the interventricular septum constitutes the anterior wall and part of the right side of the left ventricle. The left ventricle comprises several key areas, an inlet portion, an outlet portion and a trabecular part. The inlet portion is the area that contains the mitral valve apparatus. Just a quick note, if you want to interact with the heart model on the right in 3D, check our app 3D Heart Anatomy. Or if you want to immerse yourself in anatomy like never before in extended reality, check XR Heart Anatomy, link in the description. The outlet portion, sometimes called the aortic vestibule, is situated posterior to the right ventricles in fundibulum. It features smooth walls and serves as the outflow tract for the left ventricle. The left ventricle's inlet and outlet arrangements differ from those of the right ventricle. The outlet of the left ventricle directly overlaps its inlet, creating a distinctive structural configuration where the exit path for blood covers the entrance path. Upon further examination of the left ventricle, it becomes apparent that towards its apex, a complex network of thin muscle bundles can be observed. These bundles, known as trabeculations or trabecular carniae, are primarily located in the ventricle's apical third and are thinner than those in the right ventricle. Despite their smaller size, they bear a resemblance to the trabeculae of the right ventricle, displaying muscular ridges that play a significant role in the heart's internal architecture. The left ventricle on its inner surface houses two significant papillary muscles, identified as the anterior and posterior papillary muscles. These muscles are larger than their counterparts in the right ventricle, are positioned below the commissures of the mitral valve and anchor the valve using fibrous strings known as cordae tendineae. The first papillary muscle that we will examine is the anterior papillary muscle, also known as the superior papillary muscle. It is the most substantial of the two and has its origin on the lateral wall of the left ventricle. It attaches to the mitral valve through fibrous cords. The second one is the posterior or inferior papillary muscle. Though smaller than its anterior counterpart, serves an equally important function. It emerges from the inferior wall of the left ventricle, also attaching to the mitral valve through fibrous cords. Upon closer inspection of the fibrous cords, it becomes clear that the cordae tendinae primarily connect the valves to the papillary muscles, ensuring valve function during heart contractions. Interestingly, not all fibrous cords serve this purpose. Some are known as false cordae tendinae. These fibrous muscular cords do not attach to the atrioventricular valves, but are instead connected between papillary muscles or to the ventricular wall. The left ventricle is separated from the right ventricle by the interventricular septum, a critical structure positioned between the right and left ventricles of the heart. The septum features a distinctive curvature and consists of both a robust muscular section and a slender membranous section. The muscular part of interventricular septum is substantial and constitutes the bulk of the septum, offering significant support and structure. The membranous part of interventricular septum is the thinner upper segment of the septum. A closer examination of the interventricular septum reveals a third segment above the septal cusp of the tricuspid valve, termed the atrioventricular part. 
This particular location positions this part between the left ventricle and the right atrium, further underscoring its name, the atrioventricular part of the membranous septum, or simply the atrioventricular septum. This concludes our exploration of the left ventricle. Next, we will delve into some specific structures that are crucial for the heart's functioning, the cardiac valves.